can I tell you? So there's this dish, okay, my uh, family makes and talk about sticks of butter. So you take corn, frozen corn, and you put it in whatever, the stock pot. And however much corn you put in, then you cover it with whole milk just so until it um, covers the, the corn. Mm. And then I think you put in a pound of butter. A so pound that's corn of butter. <clears throat> I don't know. It's, it, we call it Christmas corn. That's corn on ground. And and then you cook it all day, <laughs> all day. I grew up on that stuff. It's like so, a slow simmer. Yes. Oh, okay. So, I love that. So does it come out like a casserole? Where you have to cut it out of there. It comes out so- pretty thick. Yeah, and it's a little bit chewy. Do you eat it cook- cold or do you eat it hot? Well, it depends. Like when it's fresh, you eat it warm. But I like cold food, so I'll eat it the next day cold. Okay, so I just want to be clear about this. One of the most non-nutritive, oh, we, knowingly the non know. most non-nutritive vegetable on the planet right now. Yeah. Coupled with whole milk, which again, there could be arguments there depending on where that milk was sourced and, and where butter. else it came from. And then a pound of butter. Yeah. But I think back in the day, it might have been parquet. Margarine. Back in the day. But now it might be, uh, might be butter. Crocker. They're uh, using the big old crocker pot. You remember <laughs> that, dude? I My yeah. family, huge crocker tub. Like you'd go out and they would just be like, like my grandfather, when he came to visit, he'd be like, when's dinner? At like the 1.30, you know what I mean? He'd be asking my grandma, what are we doing? What are we having for dinner? And he'd be coming in the kitchen like, oh, that gravy's too thin. You know, he'd be trying to fucking thicken it up. And then him and my aunt are arguing, yeah. aunt arguing it about shit. Yeah. He's like, I'll put some more butter. And I was like, dude, these guys, whole different ball game out there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> out there? Missouri, oh, Oklahoma, yeah. Tulsa. Mm-hmm. Holidays are a wacky Plains. time. I will tell you, I never had what you just described, CC. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit listening oh, to you well, that was yeah. that was disgusting uh but i do i do get like the the dishes that come up at the holidays and the the stuff like i i was really fortunate like my mom's an, an amazing cook and she's 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 the matriarch right and so at the holidays like we all go over there whether it's thanksgiving christmas new year's whatever there's always something going on over there during the winter time like and she's a she's a diehard football fan so sundays there's always something happening or whatever uh, but when we get to like Thanksgiving is only my most favorite holiday of the year. And uh, <laughs> there's just food from one end of that house to the other. From morning till night. Oh, uh, just it starts early. The football comes on. The drinking starts early. Like, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it more because I'm with the family and it's just mm-hmm. like there's some nostalgia there. And obviously the the getting together is really important for me. Uh, but <laughs> the food just, the food just is, it's nuts. And And then I literally eat myself sick. Uh, on on that day, and I I tell myself I'm not eating for three days. Yeah, <laughs> then what happens the next day? I take the leftover stone. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing it all over again, and it goes through the weekend. And then by Sunday, we're adding other stuff on, and nobody wants to cook anymore or clean. Oh yeah, so you're ordering takeout, right? And and basically through like a four or five day period, you've consumed like you feel like a python every day that's just eating a like a fucking full size deer, and you just seem to keep doing it now. I think people can relate to that. Mm-hmm. I, I I know there are because I've had conversations with people, but that's kind of what the how the holidays kind of start and finish for me a, a lot of the time um, in the past. And what I always end up doing is I always end up trying to overcompensate. Like my workouts, like, oh my God, I got to go run, you know, or I got to go. <laughs> and I hate running. So if I'm running, <laughs> that, that means I'm feeling really guilty or really motivated, right? I hate running. So I got to go run or I got to in- increase my... My, my workouts at the gym. Also, the weather changes. Mm-hmm. So it's cold yeah. outside. So or it's, it, it does rain here in California occasionally. So it's a little wet or whatever. But you know what else is happening during that time? Everybody fucking else is outside because they're doing the same thing. Like, oh, I got to get outside and I got to exercise uh, because I'm my activity level is slowed down. Like uh, the days are shorter. You're not doing the turkey trot? Hell no. <laughs> what? No, I've done those. And <laughs> so have I. We so we hosted oh. we ho- every Thanksgiving we actually host a workout here at the gym. Like it's the morning, everybody mm, gets together yeah. as a community. It's a huge group workout or whatever. And I remember a few people were leaving that workout to go to the turkey trot after. Like, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. They're leaving. You remember that? Remember that year it was like 14 degrees? Ugh. Now that doesn't that that it's for a lot of people right. in the There's country, they're like 14 like degrees. That, that likes typical winter wet weather, but in California and yeah. in Bay Area. Dude, that's cold. It, it's mm-hmm. sea level. It is that is really cold. People are doing that. But th- my point is, is the the weather changes. The, the the days are shorter. So, like if you're a cyclist or a runner, uh, you may not be getting out there as often because 
you're, you're, you've lost daylight and you don't want to be out after dark or whatever the case. These are all the things that sort of happen during the holidays. And inevitably what happens with that is workout progress stalls a little bit and weight gain happens. And I mean, what I wanted to talk about today is because I think this is, you know, seasonally it sort of makes sense is to talk about, hey, how do you continue to maintain, you know, your fitness and your gains through the holidays as but at the same time, not get into the weight gain trap to to the extent where you come out the other side with the you know, where they say average person gains five to ten pounds through the holidays, and what that's over that's over like a two month period. Mm-hmm. That's that is an immense amount of weight in two months. I mean, you literally have to work at doing that. And I just described <laughs> what, like what my Thanksgiving weekend looks like uh, a lot of times. Mm-hmm. So th- I'm putting in work. Like yeah. I'm literally. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just pushing the calories in and I'm not getting a lot of activity. I'm sitting there staring at a, a screen watching football or, or, or sitting on a couch visiting with family or whatever else. But I think there's things, there's a lot of strategy that you can use. And that's not, that's not me every time that happens to be that weekend. I really look forward to it in a sick kind of way. <laughs> uh, but there are ways to get through the holidays and still continue to get, uh, you know, obtain your fitness goals and not gain a ton of weight coming outside or coming off the back end of it. Um, so I want to talk about kind of some strategies to do that for people that are going, yeah, man, I am either my, my, my fitness either stalls and I can't, then I feel like I'm way behind coming out the other side, or I just kind of give it up altogether, which we see happen. Now, ironically here in the gym, what we see is like a real uptick in people's frequency. Like our personal training clients or our group training clients seem to be coming more likely because of what we were talking about with shorter days, colder weather, uh, and I think people have more of a rigid schedule, like they kind of know what they're doing for the for the days and months closing out the year. Not a lot of vacations happening mm-hmm. until Christmas or whatever. But so strategies to to not get fat <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, or not to get, gain too much fat, let's just say, and uh, and still maintain your goals. And even I think there's probably a way to there's there's definitely ways to stay lean here mm-hmm. during this time if you're if you're setting yourself up for success. So Jeff. In terms of setting yourself up for success, what's uh, step number one? Well, if you're somebody that is aware of what you're doing, you're already on a workout program, you're on a nutrition program, it's very easy to program this in as a positive. If you're someone that doesn't know what's going on, maybe you need to be aware of your food choices and kind of titrating back. Also, maybe not. Maybe this is good for you. You have a good time. Yeah, it wrecks the body a little bit. Guess what? You get back to work on the next week's and get back to business. Right. Kind of pull the emotional side away from it. And kind of think of it logically. And I, I kind of want to hit this from a side where people kind of know what they're doing or ways to get into it, right? So when we're talking about like cuts and bulks, yeah. right? One is over my maintenance. That's a bulk. Cut is underneath my maintenance. And my maintenance calories are movement and RMR just to keep alive. So my daily activity, what I'm like metabolic function, that's it. Baseline. If I hit those calories, I don't go plus or minus, right? I stay at my base weight. So, and in the workouts and the activity so, that you yeah. do throughout the day. So if you're somebody that has literally like, Oh, I'm trying to lose weight. Let's say six or seven months before this, you're in a huge deficit. You're doing a lot of cardio. You're working out a lot. And all of a sudden you come into this and now you're 3000, 4,000 over your maintenance. Well, yeah. For the week or whatever. Yeah. Well, you're going to gain weight, right? You're going to gain weight. Now, if you program this differently, you thought about this differently, or, hey, I've been cutting for three months and I haven't, I kind of start to see a stall. Well, which guess would, what? Which would be appropriate right? about that time, right? You start to see, well, now I can come into this holiday and bulk a little bit. Use it as a bulk. Use it as a time period where now I'm going to get my met- metabolism back up to where when I come out of it, I come to a cut at a higher level. I'm not down at 1,200 or 1,000 calories, right? I'm back up closer to my maintenance, so I'm healthier. And now I can lose weight from that higher threshold instead of being down at a thousand calories. Yeah. Can we define bulk? Yes. Because because so I think that gets misconstrued. So right? a bulk, right, is again, let's say 250 calories over my maintenance. That is not a lot. That would be considered a bulk. I would be in an excess of calories. I could find that many calories in like a bar, a quote Easy. unquote protein yep. bar at the front the front desk yep. here. And yep. if you were at your maintenance and you had a protein bar or like an amino acid shake, because they say there's zero calories in it, but like if you know science there has to be like the aminos have to have like you can go over and build fat from that right it's just anything that is over my maintenance i am going to store right yeah and i think so you, you just went back to like specific calories and a good place to start being 250 over the the point of this is the really the 
the key takeaways is one, you're in a surplus. Mm -hmm. So you're above your, you're, yep. you're beginning to be, move above your maintenance. So that's important to, to understand. Mm -hmm. Secondly, whenever you move above your maintenance, especially if you've been coming through a cut, it's likely you're going to mm -hmm. put on a little body fat. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a mindset piece you have to be ready for. And I think that's what you were talking about, about putting the emotional yeah. piece yeah. aside. So you have to be prepared for this. Like you're mm -hmm. going to be putting on some body fat. Maintain If you're trying to stay, you know, sub 8% body fat and you're not, that's, you don't typically hold that because that, you know, there are the typical ectomorphs that can do that, you know, or whatever. But, but uh, if you're, if you're trying, if you're trying to maintain that, well, this is going to be a rough, probably a rough time. Uh, and there's all kinds of things that go into managing around social gatherings and food and workouts and things like that uh, through the holidays over a period of time. But to your point, you the very specific uh, piece that you put together was generally speaking, people are coming off the summer, the warmer months, they've been in a little bit of a deficit and they've been sort of in a regular routine. Mm -hmm. right? And we just articulated that it's the winter time where people generally, generally speaking, they get a little bit outside their routine and it's not well planned which is another point I think you were making there, which is like, you have to think about what's about to happen. Yeah. Right. And part of that was the mindset, take the emotional out of it yeah. and then be aware of where you currently stand. Mm -hmm. So how many calories are you onboarding now? Like what is your new maintenance, whatever that is, um, uh, or excuse me. Yeah. Your new intake now, where it should your maintenance be? How do we get there? And then maybe even be prepared to move into a little bit more of a surplus. Cause I know for a lot of people, that's kind of like a, wow, like my, that's too much for me, right? Like what they're talking about cuts, bulks, being at your maintenance, all of these things. The body wants to be at a set point. So if I'm eating low calories, my body's going to downregulate my metabolism to that number, right? So I, what we're trying to do for me, when I look at these kind of situations is I'm going to have an excess of food. It's a way to now get my metabolism back up to a higher point where I can lose more weight. And it's just a way that I can, for my clients, can effectively put them into a better position to not gain as much weight, to build their metabolism back up. So when we come off of this, you know, holiday extravaganza, yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, coming back to regular is not hard. It's like 250 under. Now they're starting to lose weight with just a little bit of decrease. And right. we slowly go back down the ladder. Right? right. And so that's just me thinking of programming for, for my, from a lot of my clients. I love that you brought that up, man. Cause, but that, so what I, what I take away from that or what I think about when you talk about the programming is that this, this just didn't happen. Right. You, you were thinking about this months and months and months in advance. In fact, if we just kind of broke out the year and we talked about training, which I think most people can wrap their head around with regard to periodization. Mm -hmm. We periodize our training. We go through weeks and months, meso, micro, macro cycles of, uh, of training periods in order to obtain certain goals or certain results, yep. whether that's strength, mm -hmm. whether that's hypertrophy, whether that's power, whether that's going through that cut, that yep. bulk or whatever. And that undulates through the year. And if I took my year, let's just say we started in January, right? And we looked at it. I could plan out my entire year of kind of where I want to be like, Oh, I've got this vacation that's happening mm -hmm. or, or I have, you know, I like to, to ski and snowboard in the wintertime. And I know February through, you know, mid March is like going to be my real, mm -hmm. uh, that's where I want to, my peak performance to be. So I'm going to manage my training program through the winter in order to get me ready for ski and snowboard season. Right. And as I come out of that, then I know the, the months are getting warmer and I have this, this spring vacation I'm taking or whatever. And, I want to cut a little bit. I like to take a little body fat off, feel a little leaner and so forth. And so I'm going to adjust my, my, uh, my workouts accordingly, maybe get into a little bit heavier lifting, increase the intensity. Cause I wasn't really doing that during snowboard and ski season. Cause yep. it would have kind of taken away mm -hmm. or I didn't have the time to really put in. So my frequency of workouts was different, so on and so forth. Then I come out the end of that, I get into the summer, everybody wants to look good naked or, you know, half naked or whatever. And so I adjust my workouts accordingly for that. If you're not also that's called periodization, by the way. If you're not also periodizing your nutrition to meet the mm -hmm. demands or the needs yep. of those different workouts, those different activities, um, and what have you, you're missing out on all the results, like you, or the majority of the results. So to to circle it all the way back, what you're talking about is like now you've come off the summer and you were in a deficit, and that just brings us back to where you're saying now it's time to add those calories back in. So I come up above maintenance so that I could eventually go back into my cut or my performance training program and be in a position 
to do that most effectively and and have optimal amount of calories coming in to support the demand yep. of the activity that I'm putting out. Mm-hmm. So again, like if if people's minds are blown a little bit right here, it's really a matter of awareness and understanding of how I'm going to manage myself down the road. Mm. I don't know a single person that doesn't already do that at some level. The pro- the the problem is is like they don't think about it until it's like they walk in the yeah they fucking <laughs> walk in just like so yeah, two sisters weeks, getting ma- yeah. sisters yeah. getting married and in, in two months I need to lose twenty five pounds. Okay, we could we could try and do that, but you have to understand what that's going to do to you, yeah. right? If you haven't been working out at all, or if you're already severely under eating, this can be fucking miserable mm-hmm. and unhealthy. Mm-hmm. So that's a whole other whole other topic, right? Uh, that's not that's not a client I even want to take on. Because what I think Jason Phillips was talking about the girl that had the wedding, and she was like, "No, I I drink and I eat on the weekends, mm-hmm. and this is what I do." And he's like. Oh, all right. Well, if you want to do that, like we're going to do all these things during the week. Guess what? She lost weight. She made it to the wedding. So there, there's so many ways to play and plug here. You have to plan though, mm-hmm. right? Oh, absolutely. So if you, 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 you plan to succeed. And if you fail to plan, um, you plan to fail. <laughs> so as we're looking at the holidays coming all the way back, like if you're thinking about it now and you've never thought about it before and you're just listening to this going, oh shit, this makes a lot of sense. Then here's, here's some things you, you could do. Now, Jeff's already mentioned, like if you're coming off um, uh, like a deficit, then we need to get you back to maintenance and we need to do that slowly. So the faster you try to return to maintenance, the more uh, potential there is to put on a little bit more body weight. You want to, or excuse me, body fat. You want to try to do that a little bit, a little bit more slowly, a little bit more controlled. Now, if you're ready to go for it, go ahead, right? You could put in even more calories. Just understand that might, the, the consequence in air coats of that might be putting a little bit more body fat because you're not titrating it as tightly and you, you, so your adjustment is, is more on a macro. For sure. And I think also like what you're talking about is like scale weight. A lot of people use the scale. And when we're talking to people like, oh dude, I gained three pounds yesterday. It's like, dude, no, you didn't. You didn't gain three pounds of fat yesterday. Can we talk about that? Yeah, Yeah. no, like let's, okay. One pound of fat is 3,500 calories over your maintenance. So like me, I'm eating 4,000 calories a day. That number's got to be 7,500 for me to gain one pound of fat. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of fucking calories. I can't eat that. That's a, that's a lot of cows. It would make you, that's my, that's my, uh, you know, Thanksgiving day exactly. and Friday being the fucking like fried an, butter dish that she's talking <laughs> about over exactly. here and all that shit. Like, and I, and it takes work and you feel and that, that, right? Oh, yeah, you absolutely. feel that if you're doing that. But, and, and there's other things that contribute to that gain, to that, to that fat gain. But, you know, aside from the 3,500 calories, it's hormonal responses and how those calories are being sure. utilized and where they're going and, and, and what's happening. But yes, to your point, it's, it's managing it in, in a sense that makes the most or in a way that makes the most sense for you and what mm-hmm. you're trying to do. So, uh, again, adding back in calories, you have to be aware. Like, so I need to know where are my calories now? Mm-hmm. So, so taking stock of where that is, you need to track a little bit, right? Uh, get track your food for five to seven days and see where your averages are yep. knowing that coming down the pipe here, what you're going to be exposed to is likely going to put you in a, in a position to go way over that 250 or whatever the calories um, are are going to be in terms of what you're adding in in addition to your yep. your current state. So there's probably some strategies that we could talk about in order to how to deal with those, uh, and then how what are some things that we can maybe program in from a exercise perspective to work alongside and maybe even counteract some of the things that might happen along the way. So first thing is, got to know where you're at. You have to take an assessment. So track your calories, right? All right, this is where I am. This is where I need to get to. This is the plan on how I'm going to get there. You already articulated that, right? Now, this is not This is all fine and dandy, right? We have a nice little plan, mm-hmm. uh, and it looks great on paper, and I feel really committed to it, and I've been pretty consistent, you know, up until this point, and then <laughs> the party comes. Then the events come. Then the alcohol shows up and then the desserts are there and then all the, these calories are there. So how do you, what are some tips that we can, we can provide people in order to go through, uh, to, to manage the caloric intake as well as the outputs. So I'm going to start this with the mindset piece Mm -hmm. on both ends. So first off, understand you're going to be going to, you're going to be faced with decisions. These are all choices. What am I putting in my face? Right. That is a choice. I, I, no doubt about it. There are challenges with that. Like, you, are you going to be that guy? 
who goes and drinks water while everybody else is drinking alcohol and eating sweets, you need to make that decision. Are you going to be that girl who goes out to, you know, for girls night out or for the holiday party or whatever, and you're not going to be eating the foods that are being put on the table um, and not drinking the wine that's being served and whatever else. Is is that where you're going to go? If, if that's realistic for you, more power to you. For most people, it isn't. Yeah. And, it, and it doesn't have to be that way, right? It just depends on how rigid you want to run your, you, you want to run your, your program here. Like I don't eat sugar. Gotcha. Like I'd also don't make it weird at Thanksgiving. Like someone offers me a pie, like, Hey, like it just, it doesn't make me feel good. And when I tell people that they're like, Oh, like no worries. It's not like, Oh, I don't eat sweets. And they're like, well, why don't you, you know, like, Oh, like I'm boohooing them. You know, it's like, no, no, no. I just, it makes me feel like shit. And you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just, that's a really good point. Cece could tell you like, when was the last time you saw me eat dessert at Thanksgiving? It's been a while. I don't. I, I don't. Because by the time I get to there, I'm too already full. over full. Too full. And I know by putting that in there, like it's really setting. I, I made a joke about eating myself sick. If I eat that, I will literally get sick, um, because that that sugar rush, that sugar impact on top of everything that I've already done throughout the day. Again, we already talked about alcohol. I definitely mm-hmm. have more than my share of alcohol in that day. You have your just, dessert in the morning. Just, you have your mom's bunt cake. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> you leave true. the bunt cake out of there. There's always some coffee. Cake. There's always some shit going on. There. You promote it. I don't do it at night because it makes me feel like shit. Mm-hmm. I don't sleep. Like I'm a mess. Anyway, to that to that point, you have to be in the mindset of like, I'm going to be faced with these decisions. Mm-hmm. How am I going to handle those decisions? Yep. On the flip side, on the workout side, what are some things that you could be doing ahead of time or how could you be programming your, your, your program? So you talked about bulking. Like this is a great place mm-hmm. to bulk. Bulking to me is, you talked about the caloric uh, impact there and how to increase your calories so that you can increase muscle mass. Mm-hmm. With the increase in muscle mass, the increase of calories, as we mentioned, could could onboard a little bit of additional body fat. That, again, your decision making and how you're yep. programmed has everything to do with that. But as I as I look at my workouts, well, if I'm going into a bulk, and I'm going to be adding in these extra calories, I'm going to be in a surplus. Great time to start to increase the intensity mm-hmm. of the workouts that I'm performing. So if I've been going to the same workout class or, you know, whatever that happens to be for the last three, four months or whatever it is, this is a great time to change it up. Yeah. Right. Maybe the frequency of your workouts actually goes down, right? Because you are busier through the holidays and there are these things going on and my, you know, the shortening of the days changes things for your schedule, for you and your kids and whatever else. They're not going to practice it, you know, later that it, it just fucks up the schedule, Right. So maybe what I do now is I add in more intensity to my resistance training workouts, right? I start to work on muscle hypertrophy yep. uh, and or strength, depending on where mm-hmm. I am in my the phases of my training. And I really start to up that. So I'm 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 leaving more on the floor, if you will, uh, which would which would equate to a higher caloric expenditure. So that is one way to think about it. Uh the other way to think about this is this might be a great time to implement some cardio into your program if, as you start mm-hmm. to get beyond your maintenance and into the surplus. Because as I'm going through and I know the average of calories that I'm going to have by the end of the week is going to be, could be above because I'm going to get togethers, parties, whatever else, could be above where I need it to be. Maybe I start to program in or implement some cardio. Now, don't go back, going back to what I said, don't start a running program in November, right? That's <laughs> yeah. not what, especially if it's icy outside, yeah. like you don't run. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is maybe we start to program in some, some daily walks or some nightly walks, some right? Low intensity. Some seriously. low intensity, additional calorie burning. I don't think that can be uh, overstated in terms of the benefit that that can have in terms of caloric expenditure. Uh, at the end, particularly at the end of the day, like if you're doing a walk at the end of the day after dinner, there's something to be said about downregulating mm-hmm. the system. You know, everybody needs, everybody should be doing this. In my opinion, it's one of the best parts of my day. So they did a study, right? If you came in and you did like 30 minutes of running, they're like, no, no, no. Like you could break up like five, 10 minute bouts of movement, which would negate sedentary lifestyle more than going to the gym for an hour and working out hard. All right. Cause you're just getting that heart rate just above threshold. Yeah. You're sending signals to mm-hmm. get into that caloric burn state without going catabolic. Mm-hmm. Right. So that being the breaking down of tissue, it's just increasing that heart rate, respiratory yep. rate enough, which which releases a certain amount of hormones, right? That that tell the body to to basically start to calm down a little bit. So there's a down regulation of the parasympathetic systems that are that can happen there as long as you're not walking in a fucking demilitarized zone. <laughs> right. But 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 you're doing that as well as increasing caloric expenditure. So that could be very helpful in your balance of 
onboarding calories uh, that are outside of your plan or that you're, you know, these decisions you're faced with, oh, I had, you know, I'm going to have a couple, couple of drinks tonight or, or whatever else. It's a good way to keep, to tip the scale, if, if you will. Intensity in your resistance training, maybe it's increased volume, depending on, again, where you are in your phase, phases. Change up your program is what I'm saying. And maybe start to add a little bit of uh, cardiovascular exercise in there. And when I, when we say cardio, again, it's, this is not high intensity cardio training where, you know, our heart rates up at 65, 75, 85% of our heart, of our max heart rate, or however you want to calculate the thing. This is low intensity shit. Very low. Should not be taking away. Could even be helping with your recovery. Dude, like, yeah, cupboards, taking things in and out, just basic movement. Just moving around. Yeah, just basic movement. So, so also a good strategy. Um, so that might be some of the less obvious stuff. But some of the more obvious stuff to 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 keep you moving in the right direction in terms of building muscle, staying or maintaining a certain body fat level, or maybe even losing that, I get getting around mindset is there's probably a couple of other tips. You know, maybe you've heard these before, maybe you haven't. But I think as you're going into the winter, the mindset being the biggest one, knowing that you're going to get into these situations, preloading your 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 brain and preloading anybody you might be with about what's going to happen. Have a plan you know, when you go. Uh, and one of the plans that I would, I would always have there or what should be in anybody's program, but specifically going into these types of events is prioritize your macros. Big one. Yeah. Prioritize <laughs> your macros. Cause there's often all kinds of choices, right? It's no different than any other time, except that there's usually more. <laughs> uh, so things shouldn't change that much. There's more, but then the other thing is too, I mean, you're not cooking it, right? So you're not preparing it. So you don't necessarily know what's in the stuff that you're going to be consuming. So um, I think prioritizing your macros and getting in your protein, yeah. you know, Big before one. you consume the other things um, and, and try to stick to those grilled lean mm -hmm. meats or proteins, I should say, because it could be fish too. Yeah, I think one of the ways to do that is, is oftentimes these are, these are group gatherings, right? And so everybody's asked to contribute something or you can ask. Can I contribute something? <laughs> well, I'm going to be selfish as hell. Like, okay, yeah, sure. I'd, I'd love, can you bring a dish? Yep, I'll bring a dish and it's going to be a protein forward dish, yep. whatever it is. And that way I know, I don't know what else is going to be there, but I know at least I'm going to meet my protein macro needs and I'm preparing it and I'm taking, you know, the the responsibility of this and uh, I'll be first in, <laughs> first in line to make sure I make that, you know, get my, get my set of tongs into the protein dish first before anybody else does. So I get my you know, my seven to 10 ounces of protein for the day or for that particular meal or whatever it is. For that's, Scott, that's light. That's a good way. <laughs> that's a good way to, um, again, pre-plan and kind of get your, get, put yourself in a position to win when you're in these situations. Cause there's never going to be any shortage of carbohydrate or fat on the table, yeah. right? There's, that's not going to be the case. So prioritizing your macros, yeah. um, is, is one way. I, one of the other way, things to obviously be careful of are, the, the amount of alcohol that you're consuming. Mm -hmm. And I think it might be worth talking about sort of kind of the effects of alcohol uh, beyond actually the additional cal caloric onboarding that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, because I don't know that people really understand the impacts of, and we can keep this high level, but the impact that alcohol has on uh, protein metabolism, right? What's going on from a hormonal perspective, how it impacts things. So, so like you work out and you want to go and then you have a couple beers afterwards. Don't I, I do it sometimes too. So, it's not a, a crazy thing, but if you are drinking every time after you work out, like you're stimulating protein synthesis and then you're down regulating it through alcohol, you're spiking your blood sugar higher than anything that you know. It is one of the things that just spikes the shit out of blood sugar. It's a spike for a long time, takes away from sleep. You're not mm -hmm. able to get into deep REM sleep. Um, and you just don't recover. From protein synthesis perspective, what, what we know is when you onboard that alcohol, Here's what happens. Like your body sees that as foreign, right? And it's going to try to metabolize whatever is in there that it's not supposed to be in there. And alcohol is kind of one of those things or is one of those things. So it's going to go after that first. So you're, you're onboarding your protein shake or whatever, your concoction. <laughs> and then, you know, an hour later, you're, you know, you're chasing that with cocktails or beers. 
effectively your body is going to kind of shut down the processes that it's using in order to um, assimilate that protein. And it's going to move to metabolizing the alcohol. So that that's a thing, mm-hmm. right? The second thing is, is there's a lot of calories in that. If your body is, when your body is ultimately going to break that down, it's going to probably turn that into a sugar, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Which is then going to be tried to be used yep. as a carbohydrate. And once that doesn't need to be utilized mm-hmm. anymore, it will try and store that where it can. Again, when we talk about muscle glycogen, liver glycogen, things like that, and whatever's left over will likely be metabolized into fat and stored as fat, right? So that's kind of the process it goes through at a very high level, yeah. right? So just understand that when you're putting that in your system. So um, it, but I think the bigger piece is to be, so when you're doing your, when you're, when you're, uh, calculating your calories, sorry, you're tracking your calories, you absolutely 1,000% have to track alcohol. Yes. Yep. You have to track it. And that's hard. I don't. I can't even track when I make a mixed drink. I'm like, it's one, just two shots. It's right. really easy to do. <laughs> so if you're doing this regularly, yeah. it's it, this is going to impact you. For sure. It'll impact you, period. But if you're doing it regularly, you need to be tracking it regularly. Mm-hmm. If you're just going to have one day on occasion or whatever, fuck it. Just yeah. jump back that's on the wagon the next day mm-hmm. and start calculating it. You, you over-consumed calories. Some of it was alcohol. Maybe it disrupted your your protein synthesis but i you cannot understate what you guys mentioned those two other things one is the inflammatory implications that it has and two the uh the implications that it has on your sleep yeah. and your recovery these are huge so from an inflammatory perspective we already know that if the gut is inflamed like all of the processes mm-hmm. that are necessary for muscle building fat loss uh, energy production uh Basically, getting through the activities of daily living, all, onboarding nutrients, all that stuff is going to be compromised. Mm-hmm. So, alcohol just does that. Obviously, some people are more impacted than others. It's not a one size fits all, uh, depending on where your gut health is going in, uh, and you know how you metabolize that alcohol. Not everybody does that the same way, mm-hmm. um, as you may be familiar. That's going to have different impacts on different people, but it will impact you. There's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, it's not a matter of if, it, it, it's going to. It's just how, right? But the second part of that is what it does in terms of your sleep and your recovery. So you can have all the calories dialed in, all the, all the workout programming dialed in, uh, all of that stuff kind of on lock. But if you're not resting and recovering properly, uh, it's going to be problematic, right? Sure. It's going to take away. So just understand when you're onboarding this alcohol, it's not just calories. There are implications to that beyond Especially that. Especially if you're a nightly drinker, right? A nightcapper, like someone who's like, hey, I get off work, I have dinner, whatever. They might have like a glass of wine and then they finish with a couple scotches or something every night. Yep. Right? Down the, I mean, down the line and then that night, but you're just building habit and you're continually not getting the sleep, right? Mm-hmm. So over time, testosterone, tanks, right. all of these things. Cortisol is up. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, the uh, waking and sleep hormones start getting disrupted, right? Your cortisol curves thrown off. All of these things... Um, just from a habitual daily thing that doesn't really seem like that big of a deal at the time, right? But uh, when we start breaking down and looking at what's going on, it's like, oh, this is actually a really big factor in, you know, a limitation that I'm having. It's not, yeah, it's, I think the point to be made is like, it's not that you can't have it. It's just understand the implications of when you do. Exactly. So, and also understand that going back to the metabolism of that stuff and what you're trying to do in terms of maybe staying lean Your or goals, bulk yeah. and, not, and not gain too much body fat, alcohol will not be helpful in any way. It's just not going to help you. So that being said, choose wisely. I mean, there are lots of different things you could do. I mean, like some of these IPAs out there that that people are drinking, that's like a fucking 350 calorie beer. You do a couple of those, boom, like you're way over the top Uh, versus drinking more of the clear type of, you know, liquors like like vodka or whatever else. Obviously, if if you're mixing it with sugar sugar or sugar or whatever else, like you know, it's, gonna it's, add up. it's splitting hairs, oh, right? Sure. But there's a caloric load that comes along with this as well. So mm-hmm. you need to be aware of whatever it is that you're drinking, plan ahead, plan wisely, whatever, sure it, is it, hydrated. whatever it is you need to do, yeah, whatever it is you need to do to stay in front of that. So um, the other thing that I think would be important that, that maybe we didn't talk about at the beginning is have some litmus or have some idea of how much weight you're gaining versus how much fat you're gaining versus how much in com- comparatively to muscle and maybe do a body comp at the beginning so that you're measuring like, what am I actually, what's actually happening here mm-hmm. um, in terms of weight gain or muscle gain. That way you can 
Thai trader make make adjustments through there. That that's a little bit more of an advanced way sure. of looking at it. But you might feel fluffy one day, and you look kind of like do the body comes. Like, oh, dude, I I I gained like a little fat, but like I gained three pounds of muscle. <laughs> and it's like yeah. you just take the scale weight for like I'm fat, I'm a right. fat fuck. Mm-hmm. I just went through, you know. So there's. What you're talking about, body composition is huge. It is, specifically during the holidays, because oftentimes, again, we're introduced to all these different foods. We're we're oftentimes, we're introduced to all the alcohol, all the different things. The things that are just outside of our routine. And this comes back to the inflammation talk. Like the weight that we've gained, what is it really coming from? Because, you know... I know there are certain foods that I can eat or there's, you know, I, there's a uh, limitation in terms of alcohol that I can drink. And once I tip that threshold, man, my body freaks out. just yeah, freaks yeah. out. It goes right into infl- infl- in inflammatory mode. I retain a lot of fluid and I feel fat. Mm-hmm. But the reality of it is, is I'm retaining a lot of water. I didn't gain, to your point, Jeff. Yeah. Mm-hmm three pounds of fat overnight, I'm retaining a ton of water. And certain things can help with that. Obviously, manage your consumption, uh, know what you're putting in your system, but also recognize that that's probably going to happen to you. You're going to, and and if you know what that feels like, we had another talk about feeling healthy and knowing what feeling healthy versus feeling unhealthy feels like. You wake up the next day and go, oh shit, I way overdid it. (laughs) And I feel like ass Mm -hmm. and it's, I feel lethargic now and I don't want to do anything and I don't want to work out. And, you know, I've got, uh, you know, I take my socks off at the end of the day and I got these, you know, rings around my, my ankles where the, you know, the fluid's just building up whenever else. That's an indication your body's retaining yes. a lot of fluid and you're inflamed. And that's likely due to the consumption or whatever you put in your body and, uh, on the back end, whatever you didn't do from physical, from a physical perspective. So, um, if the, the weight gain could be coming from the inflammation caused by you onboarding these substances, whether it's food or otherwise, uh, that creates that. Um, so you, you may have mentioned this out loud, CC. I'm not sure, but one of the things you were saying was staying hydrated, mm-hmm. which it's colder, right? The weather's a little bit different. Uh, for I know for me, I am definitely not as aware of drinking water, which actually sure. uh, makes me, in, uh, on the flip side of that, more aware that I'm not drinking the water. And what I ended up doing by the end of the day is I'm chasing yeah. my water. And then you're intake. waking up in the middle of the night, having to go to Dude, the I was bathroom. up three <laughs> times last night alone. The weather, oh. we were in Florida, it was like 85 degrees and yeah. humid. Uh, so like I was like killing the water, yeah. right? So this is like element in there. There was mm. alpha brain in there because I was in oh, class. Yeah. Like it was just, I was downing water. And then when we came back, it was like 60 degrees, uh, which isn't by any means cold. But at night it's getting down below 40 and I'm just, I'm out walking, you know, yeah. you mentioned the walking thing and, and whatever. I'm just, I'm not feeling the urge to drink. Uh, so when I'm, I got home last night, I think I probably put down like 64 ounces of water over about an hour Jeez. and a half period. And I was up for fucking three yeah. times. And that's oh, annoying, yeah. Yeah. right? That's annoying. But that, and that's just because I wasn't paying attention. Uh, but that's a great way to push water mm-hmm. pushes water. So if you're bringing in fluid on a regular basis, um, and consistently throughout it, the day, right? yeah, it'll, it'll start to push. It'll help to push or release the water that's in there. But again, you throw in some, sometimes you throw in some foods that your body doesn't like. Um, it could have things on, you'd be, be onboarding it. If you're not preparing it, that has things in it, your body doesn't like, you're not aware of. And the next thing you know, you're feel like a bloated fat mess when the reality of it is, is a lot of it's water retention. Mm-hmm. So just understanding that, um, and taking notes. So we talked about maybe doing a body comp. We talked about understanding where your maintenance level is adding in those extra calories or uh, adding in you know, maybe 250 calories at a time till you reach maintenance and then being careful with that, mm-hmm. keeping the alcohol consumption to a minimum as you know, we should probably be doing anyway, but also knowing we're going to go over. We talked about uh, staying hydrated there at the end. We talked about maybe adding in more volume, more intensity to your workouts so that you're counteracting the onboarding of these new calories to work through your bulk. And we talked about the cardio piece so that we're, we're, increasing our caloric expenditure throughout the week um, on an average basis so that we can maintain that caloric or caloric burn. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of stuff. And the reality of it is, is we're not talking about a long period of time because most times people come out the backside of like New Year's. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh shit. Yeah. Like I got to get back on my routine. I'm so done. I I miss my routine. (laughs) But what if this was your routine going into that? Right. And then coming out in January was just part of it. Mm -hmm. Now you're on the, say, week, I don't know, 10, 12 of your bulking phase. 
You're going to be working in towards the end of January-ish now, maybe beginning of February-ish, where you move into a different phase of training. Uh, and where, again, the holiday parties have now you know, dissipated. And again, we talk about snowboarding and skiing or whatever else. Things have changed. But things to think about as you go into the holidays so that you don't get fat, you still can build muscle or maintain the muscle that you have and feel good, so good. doing it in a way that sets you up for success through the holiday, but also coming out the backside. 